و برای دولت چهاردهم برای بزرگایی که در روزهای آینده احتمالا بیشتر با اونها آشنا خواهیم شد و اسامی اونها منتشر میشه بعد از اعلام وصول در مجلس شورای اسلامی و از وزیر پیشنهادی تبدیل به وزیر خواهند شد بعد از رأی اعتماد وکلای ما و شما در مجلس شورای اسلامی آرزوی موفقیت میکنیم ان که پیروز و سلامت باشند کم رؤیت کم فی هل قسم فی تجاه المقاومه وحرارت المقاومه يعني تملكنا الكثير من الفخر والاعتزاز ونحن نتجول في أرض الحضارات وننتقل من بلد إلى بلد ومن دولة إلى دولة و... الله يسهل عليهم الله يسهل عليهم يعني ان شاء الله ربنا ربنا يسهل يلا يلا ليش كمل الله يخلي خرفهم ربنا يسهل ان شاء الله ربنا يرزقه ان شاء الله بالذات الله I think that you know Israel set very clear goals for the war in Gaza to eradicate Hamas as a governmental and military entity. And while the Southern Command uh, is uh, dealing with eradicating Hamas military capabilities, we also need to destroy the cap governmental capabilities by targeting the leaders that were responsible for the massacre of 1,200 Israelis in one day on the 7th of October. Um, we targeted the death that was the let's say the chief of staff of the Hamas terror army, and now Ania, uh, we're still looking for Sinwar, and there are other leaders we did uh, to deal with. But eventually, uh, the goal is clear, and Israel won't stop until, until every single leader that was involved in this massacre uh, will pay for what uh, they did. Well, it's not the first time uh, that we see Israel operating at the heart of uh, the Iranian uh, regime. And we've seen that in the past, uh, talking about scientists that uh, dealt with the nuclear military plans that uh, disappeared or uh, were targeted. We saw the whole archive of Iran taken uh, to Israel. So it's obvious uh, that they are completely penetrated, just as Hezbollah uh, is penetrated by Israel. Uh, we saw yesterday the precise strike on the chief of staff of uh, Hezbollah. And um, obviously it sends a message that Israel can get to any terror leader anywhere. Even if it takes a bit of time, eventually uh, we'll be able to target them. So he was the chief of staff. He, he is one of the founders of Hezbollah, probably the most uh, prominent uh, military figure in the organization. He conducted all the operations. He conducted the uh, precision missile, missile project. Uh, that is one of the most dangerous strategic uh, buildups of power that uh, Hezbollah has been doing and Israel has be, been dealing with for a long time. He's the really closest advisor uh, of Nasrallah, and the ability to really know exactly where he is in the Dachia, the heart of uh, Beirut, uh, shows really what intelligence Israel enjoys and operational capabilities to carry out such a targeted strike. And uh, this is a message also to Nasrallah. We'll go to, we got to number two, we'll get to you as well, just as we got a uh, Ania. And I think this is a, a process in which Israel is degrading their capabilities, but also building back deterrence. My message to the West is we are fighting a war. We are at the front of a global war that endangers the whole Western society. And a victory for Israel is a victory for everybody. And therefore, all countries need to support Israel in fighting extremism. This extremism will continue and will uh, reach Europe and the U.S. It's a huge danger to civilization. 
And uh, therefore, uh, this fight that is happening in the Middle East, we need to contain it in the Middle East and not let it spread around uh, globally. I think that Israel, and I've said that from day one, uh, when the war started on the 7th of October, realistically speaking, Israel has only, has only one choice in Lebanon, and this is a full-scale attack. I don't see any resolution. I don't see Hezbollah withdrawing willingly, especially when there is no American leadership, when there is no willingness to pose a military threat on Iran or uh, Hezbollah, and where the policy is appeasement. This is not going to get Hezbollah to withdraw. And this, this basically leaves Israel with not many options. Uh, if we want to bring back safely 80,000 Israeli uh, misplaced uh, citizens home, we need to push Hezbollah out of South Lebanon, and we need to hit very hard all their capabilities all around Lebanon. Israel can do it. Uh, the readiness of the Northern Command is very, very high, and they are ready any moment to strike. And this is a decision the cabinet needs to take, if and when uh, to go to a full-scale war in the, in the North. And obviously, there is a danger that uh, Iran will also join. And if Iran joins, this is a regional global war. This is not just about uh, Lebanon. And the U.S. will have to also uh, be part. Well, I think that if we don't attack first, they will attack. I don't see Iran deterred. I don't see Hezbollah deterred. They are shooting constantly. They started shooting us on the 7th of October um, without any um, attack on our side. And um, we cannot continue with the reality that the whole north of Israel is deserted. We need to bring back our uh, citizens. They're not going back as long as Hezbollah is in South Lebanon. So we need to hit, and we need to hit hard. And we need a ground incursion in South Lebanon, not on all of Lebanon, to push uh, Hezbollah north. And um, eventually we'll have to deal with the head of the snake. And this is Iran. And this is not Israel's private problem. This is a global problem. And I do have an ex expectation from the US to lead the coalition to deal seriously with Iran, to impose harsh sanctions and be willing to pose a credible military threat on this uh, terrible regime that is endangering the whole globe. <clears throat> I think that when you talk to um, prominent figures in the administration, in Congress, Senate, they are really worried about their experience in Iraq and Afghanistan. They are worried about boots on the ground. But dealing with Iran doesn't require any boots on the ground. It requires a massive Air Force attack coordinated, the US, Israel, maybe, maybe other countries in a coalition. And the one or two airstrikes can completely change Iran end to end, can destroy their nuclear program, can hit uh, also the build up and industry that are producing massive capabilities for Russia to fight in Ukraine, can hit economical sites as Israel did in uh, Yemen. And this is just an operation from the earth. There is no need of, for boots on the ground, certainly not in a country so big like uh, Iran. And this will deter Iran. This will change the reality we are seeing where Iran is really operating to take control of the whole Middle East and beyond, also North Africa and other places. And if we want to stabilize the globe, we need to be strong. On the weak link of this, uh, I would say, Eastern a block that we have seen emerging uh, with Russia and China backing them up economically. The, the world is not stabilized. And if we are not strong as a society, the West, the destabilization will continue. We'll see China invading Taiwan. We'll see Russia continuing the aggression in Europe. We'll see Iran expanding. Only strength is going to stop this uh, process and pre prevent, hopefully, a third world war.